Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about variables, specifically the difference between shell variables and environment variables, as well as a few little tricks to use them locally in a shell and the env utility, which is typically used to add or in some cases remove environment variables. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I was actually showing this because I have a command that I've been running recently for my Pokemon scraper. Uh, which looks something, oops, uh, which looks something like this. Um, <laughs> big long command, doesn't really matter. The important part of it is this beginning part. And um, my, my partner was asking, well, what is this no show equals one command? Because it looks like a command. However, this is actually an environment variable that's being passed onto this executable here. And we'll get to that later, but first I wanted to show off uh, what variables are in a shell and then what environment variables are. Uh, so a variable, at least in Bash, you know, this will be slightly different if you're using like fish or some other grain shell that doesn't use uh, shell compatible syntax. But typically variables are assigned by saying uh, variable name equals and then a value. Uh, so in this case, I have set a variable equal to x. We can show that by using shell functions uh, such as this. So we can write this variable back. Um, but this on its own is just a shell variable. It's only available in the current shell. Uh, it's not available in any subprocesses. So for instance, if we do Python and we do, oops, and we do import OS, uh, X is not going to be in OS.environ. Um, oops, oh, sorry, in, not is. Uh, so this, this shell variable is not available to subprocesses by default. I'm actually going to make a shorthand for this to show this later, which is just um, using bash-c. This will make a new process, and uh, you'll see we aren't able to see x inside that subprocess, but we can see it in our parent process. The shell variables are not inherited into subprocesses, and this is because they're they're basically just like local variables, and they're not exactly local variables because they're globals in the shell, but. Um, they're not inherited by another process in the same way that, you know, a variable in a Python process is not inherited by anything that it calls. Um, but you can make these inherited and you can do that by exporting them. Uh, so you can say export X. This will make the X variable available to subprocesses. And now if we run that same bash dash C and make a subprocess, you'll see that the variable is now inherited and this makes it into an environment variable. Uh, you can actually do this all in one statement by doing export x equals 1. So this not only assigns x to 1, but it also exports it. It's kind of just a shorthand there. Well, let's, let's do 2 so that we can uh, show that it changed here. Oops. Dash dash c. You'll see that it is now 2 in the subprocess. Cool. Uh, now if you want to unexport that, you can do, I believe it's export dash n. This should still make x a shell variable. Uh, but it is no longer a uh, environment variable. The other thing you can do is just unset x. This will remove it as a shell variable and remove it as an environment variable if it were already one. Uh, so now we can see x is gone. Cool, okay, so that's kind of like the basics between shell variables and environment variables. Now I wanna show you, uh, I've also shown you how to set them uh, and unset them. I also wanna show you how to use uh, shorthand calls to set environment variables, as well as the env utility, which is another way to do this. All right, so uh, I actually showed a little bit of a hint of this earlier when I showed you this uh, no show equals one command. This is a way to pass environment variables to uh, processes, and this is useful if you just want to do one one-off temporary call to something. Uh, so you can see if we do echo $x here, uh, it will pass this as an environment variable, not as a shell variable, but as an environment variable to this subprocess. And you'll note that it doesn't actually set it. It's simply for this one command. This can be really useful if you only need an environment variable for one command. Um, and you can also pass multiple variables this way too. So if we do x equals one, y equals one, z equals one, oh, z equals, well, you can make it an empty string too. Uh, x, y, z, you'll see that those are passed along. Uh, you know, this is passed along as an empty string, but it is set. There are ways to see a set variable, but not, um, not containing a value with uh, test. I think it's test dash n. That might be empty. I don't know. Man test, and you can find the particular one for it. Uh, oh, I guess z is the length of the string is non zero. Um, but there's somewhere in here that <laughs> it goes over how to make um, set or, or check for set or unset. But um, I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. 
Uh, the other thing that you can do is instead of, you know, say you're not working in a shell, maybe you're working in Python and you want to run an executable. Uh, yes, you can just set it in os.environ or you can pass env in your subprocess call, but you can also use this special utility called env, um, which is an executable. You may have seen it for shebangs uh, where you would do user bin env bash, like this is your shebang. Uh, this is actually taking advantage of a, a utility of env, which is that it is going to look up the executable uh, that is not a variable. But env on its own, or what it was designed for, is to set environment variables and then call an executable. Uh, so in the same way that we did uh, this without the env call here, you can also use env to set variables there. And you, know, you can set many variables in the same way. Env is just interpreting these as arguments and then interpreting this as a command. So anything that has an equals in it, it will treat it as an argument. Uh, and then calling this command with whatever arguments there are. And there are a bunch of options to env. Uh, the one that I use the most is, uh, let's just do env bash echo user. So we got it working first, so it knows my user here. Uh, there's env i. What, what dash i does is it drops all of the environment variables. So you can see here, user is no longer passed along to this subprocess, and so we get an empty string here. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other options to env. Again, I'm gonna leave those to the, the, the viewer, to the reader. <laughs> no one's reading my video. Um, but there are a whole bunch of options to env that allow you to add or remove environment variables such that you can you know, control your subprocess. And this is a little bit portable than using a shell, or a little bit more portable than using a shell, just because uh, it's an executable, you know how it's going to function, uh, and you don't necessarily have to worry about what shell your user is using, whether it's foreign shell or zish or fish or <laughs> whatever other weird shell interpreter your user might be using. Um, or you're in Alpine where you don't have things available, or BusyBox, or any, anyway, there's all sorts of places where Bash or SH might not be available or might not work how you expect it to, and so env might be a little bit more portable to do that. Or, you know, if you're using a programming language, use the facilities of your programming language to out or remove environment variables rather than dealing with this. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.